Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the FL Sun Speeder Pad, which looks pretty similar to the Creality Sonic Pad. The major hardware differences between these two pads are that the Sonic Pad has 2GB of RAM, 8GB of ROM, 4 USB ports, and a power button, while the Speeder Pad has 1GB of RAM, 16GB of ROM, 3 USB ports, and no power button. Besides that, features like the processor, the 7-inch touchscreen, accelerometer, and the rest of the hardware are pretty much the same. As for the software, the Speeder Pad runs the Mainsail web interface, and the Sonic Pad runs Fluid by default, but you can also launch Mainsail using another port number. For printer profiles, the Speeder Pad comes with four FL Sun printer profiles, including the V400, Super Racer, QQS Pro, Q5, and five other types of common printer profiles. The Sonic Pad comes with 22 Creality printer profiles and a tool that allows you to generate firmware files for different printers. A few months ago, I reviewed FL Sun's newest machine, the V400, which runs Clipper and prints as fast as 400 ml per second with an 8K acceleration with pretty good print quality. Like some of you, I still have an older FL Sun Super Racer, which is also a pretty fast printer, but it's limited by Marlin firmware and the slow onboard processor, so it can only print up to 150 to 200 mm per second in speed with a 3K acceleration, so it may not print as fast as the V400. I was wondering if adding a speeder pad to run Clipper firmware would make the Super Racer work as well as the V400, so we're going to find that out today. Additionally, the speeder pad claims it can control three printers at the same time, so I will hook up some other non-FL Sun printers, like a basic Ender 3 and an Ender 3 S1, and see how the pad does. I would like to thank FL Sun for sending me the speeder pad to review, and with that, let's get started. There are only a few items inside the box, which are the speeder pad and its power supply, an accelerometer with the USB cable, and the user manual. I will first try this speeder pad with the Super Racer, but before that, I will print a 3D Benchy to make sure everything is working. This Benchy is printing at 150 mm per second in speed with a 3K acceleration, which is faster than most printers that run Marlin firmware in the market, and the print quality is still pretty good. To get started, we need to download the Clipper firmware from the FL Sun website. It has the V400, Super Racer, and other FL Sun machines, as well as profiles for five common types of printers, but I will talk more about this later. For now, just download the SR files. Unzip the files, and we need to copy these two files to the microSD card of the printer. Insert it, and the firmware will be updated automatically. As the stock screen is no longer useful, it will just show the logo like this. Then, we can connect the printer to the speeder pad using a USB cable. The one at the bottom is port 1, and though this pad can control three printers at the same time, we will just start by using port 1 for this Super Racer. Select FL Sun SR for the Super Racer, choose port 1, and accept the changes. After the restart, we will home the printer, and it looks like the connection is fine. Next, we will connect the bed leveling sensor and do a round of calibration followed by doing bed mesh. Remove the bed leveling sensor, move Z to the zero position, and set the Z offset, just like how you would set up a new printer. Then, we will set up Wi-Fi, just like how you set up the Wi-Fi on a cell phone or iPad. Select your SSID, enter your Wi-Fi password, and the IP address of the speeder pad is here. Okay, we can now go to the computer and set up this super racer and send a print over Wi-Fi. I will use the V400 profile for this Super Racer, as I found this profile prints faster. As the print volume of this Super Racer is smaller, I will set it to 264 by 264 and set the height to 320. 
then use the Moonraker plugin to connect to the Clipper web interface. Just enter the name SpeederPad or the IP address. I will also enable the preview thumbnail. Let's print a Benchy. I will use the V400 standard profile where the maximum speed is set to 400 mm per second, but this is just for travel, as when printing infill, it will slow down to 350 mm per second. For the wall, bottom, top, and the first layer, it will slow down accordingly. I will just leave the acceleration as the default, which is from 5k to 8k. I don't like using a brim, so I'll change that, and I'll also change the retraction distance to 6.5 millimeters, and this is all I want to change. We can now send it directly to the printer. When I open the web interface, it shows the Benchy thumbnail and the nozzle and bed are heating. Let's see if the Benchy can finish in 38 minutes like Kira estimated. The Benchy finished within 38 minutes. There's a bit more stringing than the stock 43 minute one, but the input shaper helps the surface look a bit cleaner, and the cooling is also pretty good as I replaced the part cooling fans with this printer with two 5015 blowers. I also printed some orthotic insoles for my dad. This high infill insole will take one and a half hours to print, which is way faster than a standard Ender 3S1, which would take over six hours. It finally finished in a little less than 1 hour and 35 minutes. For this kind of functional part, we don't need super fine details or a clean surface, so high speed printing really can save a lot of time. Next, I will connect more printers to this pad. I will first download the Type-B profile, which is for printers like the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, or V2 Neo, which come with a 32-bit board. Unzip the file and copy the firmware to the micro SD card of the printer, turn it on and let it flash the firmware. Then connect the printer to the second port of the pad. Go to Action, Printer, Configuration, and this time we will select Type-B and Port 2. After the pad restarts, try to home the printer and it looks fine. Since the stock Ender 3 uses limit switches to do homing, nothing will change even if we change the firmware from Marlin to Clipper, so this printer should be ready to use. Finally, I will connect an Ender 3 S1 to the speeder pad. Download the Type-A profile, unzip the files, and copy this file and folder to the root of the SD card. So, no matter if you have a STM103 or 407 processor, it will upload the correct firmware file to the printer. Connect the printer to the top USB port, which is the third one, and this time we will select type A and port 3 on the pad. As the Ender 3S1 uses a CR touch for auto bed leveling, we will need to do another round of bed mesh. After that, move Z to zero and set the Z offset. Now, our web interface shows the three printers, the Super Racer and the other two, which don't have names yet. I will change the second printer's name to Ender 3 and change the third printer's name to Ender 3 S1. All three printers are now showing on the web interface. We also need to edit the printer name.cfg to have the touchscreen show the printer name instead of A and B. Setting up this printer in Cura is the same as it is for the Super Racer. The only difference is that when I enter the IP address of the printer in the Moonraker plugin, I will enter the IP address and the port number 7126 as it's connected to port 2. For the Ender 3S1, the port number would be 7127 as it's connected to port 3. All the printers are now ready. I tried to send three print jobs to the speeder pad at the same time, and they seem to work fine. Other than the 3D Benchy, I also printed a speeder pad stand on the Super Racer and a filament holder on the Ender 3S1. For now, all of the stock screens are useless except for the classic LCD screen. 
If you want to enable the code, you can copy a few lines of code from other clipperprinter.cfg files that enable the LCD screen and add them to your own printer.cfg file so the screen can be used to do some basic operations, similar to a Marlin LCD screen. When all three printers are printing at the same time, the CPU load is around 14% and the memory load is around 30%. So it seems like the hardware of the speeder pad is able to handle all three printers at the same time. Okay, let's talk about what I think of this speeder pad. It works very well with FL Sun printers, or at least works perfectly with my Super Racer. The printer profile is well-tuned, and the input shaper and pressure advance are both pre-calibrated, so it prints great. It also supports other non-FLSUN machines and has five other types of printers. Type A is for printers like the Ender 3S1 and Ender 3S1 Pro. Type B is for the 32-bit board versions of the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, and Ender 3 V2 Neo. Type C is for the CR10 or similar printers with an AT Mega 2560 8-bit chip. Type D is for the AnyCubic Viper, and Type E is for the CR10 Pro V2 or similar printers with an 8-bit chip. In fact, based on these config files, you can modify it to fit most types of 3D printers, but of course, if you aren't using the exact same machine, you may need to refer to the pinout of the motherboard to edit the printer.cfg file yourself. For non-FLSUN printers, however, input shaper and pressure advance are not pre-calibrated, so you need to use the accelerometer that comes with the speeder pad to calibrate it manually. After adding the speeder pad to my Super Racer, it prints faster, but it still can't reach the same speed as the V400. As the Super Racer is a Bowden setup, it requires a 6.5mm retraction distance, which slows down the printing speed. For example, when printing a 3D Benchy, almost 40% of the printing time is taken up by retraction. But for the V400, the direct drive only takes up 21% of the printing time. So, after adding the speeder pad, the Super Racer is still 15-30% to slower compared to the V400, depending on how much retraction is needed for your model. Moreover, the hot end of the Super Racer may not be as good as the V400, so the filament extrusion may also not be as good, but I can still get presentable results when printing at 250mm per second with 8K acceleration, which still makes it faster than other so-called 250mm per second 3D printers in the market. I think most people who want to add a clipper pad to their printers are probably choosing between the speeder pad and the Creality Sonic pad. Compared to the Sonic Pad, besides the RAM, ROM, the number of USB ports, the power switch, and the web interface I mentioned earlier in this video, they basically just work the same. So which one is better? My answer is that it depends on what printers you own. If you have FL Sun printers, you should definitely choose the Speeder Pad, as the built-in profiles are well-tuned and you basically don't need to edit any files, such as the Super Racer profile inside the Speeder Pad. They pre-calibrated input shaper and pressure advance values using a factory machine, and these values work perfectly for my printer. I didn't have to touch the accelerometer at all. It was the same for the V400, which doesn't come with an accelerometer and works just fine with the pre-calibrated values. However, if you have Creality printers, using a Sonic Pad will be much easier, as it has ready-to-use profiles for 22 Creality printers, which should cover most printers from the old Ender 3 to the latest Ender 5 S1. For those using non-FLSUN or non-Creality printers, the Creality Sonic Pad has a tool to generate firmware bin files for almost any printer, and also allows you to change many settings on the Sonic Pad touchscreen instead of having to edit the printer.cfg file. So, the compatibility for other third-party printers of the Sonic Pad is slightly better. For now, most printers in the market are still running Marlin, but I would like to see other manufacturers have their clipper firmware for the stock motherboard ready, as well as the printer.cfg file with input shaper and pressure advance pre-calibrated with the factory machine, so users can just download the files and make their printers clipper ready. This will be super useful for other users who own a non-FLSUN or non-Creality printer that run Marlin who want to switch to clipper firmware. That's all I have to share about the speeder pad. 
If you are interested, I put the link under the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.